How you doing? Good? Good. Uh, I was gonna release a video today on my uh, PC, uh, the hardline water cooling build I did, but I felt like that's too serious. We, we need some nonsense, don't you think? So uh, I came up with a weird idea last night. Well, I, I don't, maybe one of you guys said it a long time ago. I don't remember, but I was just sitting there thinking, uh, what's a question nobody's asking? And I was like, well, if you have a fan and it's pushing air, it does so with, with blades. What if those blades had holes in them? How much air, how much flow would you lose? Would you lose any? Would you lose a lot? Would it kind of work the same? I mean, the, and you're like, well, what's the point of that? Well, no, no, there really isn't one, but I guess you could think of it as like this. Uh, the more material you have in a fan, the, the more it costs to make because material costs money. So if you were able to produce a fan that had a bunch of holes in it, ignoring the, uh, the, the probably the more expensive tooling to make that part, if you were able to do so, would you save some money in material costs? Maybe. But how much would you lose in cooling? So that's what we're going to do today. I have a, I have a A12 X25 going as per usual on this 240 millimeter radiator, only using half of it. Now I was going to buy a 120 millimeter radiator for testing because then I don't have to print out two fans, I just print out one and it saves some time and whatnot. But then I was like, I have a 240, well, I just use half of it. And then I think some of you guys are like, you can't do that, it's not the same. But why not? I'm not convinced. If you think this is different than a 120, let me know why. Maybe you can convince me. But for now, we're just going to do half of a 240 to uh, see how one fan does. And it's just currently running its, its thing, 45 minutes of Ida 64, getting everything up to temp and seeing where it levels off at. But I need to make some fans. So I think uh, we'll take you guys along for the whole trip. We got to do it. We got to make a new design. We got to print one out that's normal because, of course, we got to do a good fan and then a, a printed normal fan and then the same design printed Swiss cheese fan. So I'll show you how I go through the whole kit and caboodle of processes to make a fan. And now that I got two printers, if you haven't seen the review on the Delta Q5, I guess it's not really a review. The unboxing first look first print, check it out. Deltas are sweet. Um, but I can print, you know, the normal one and the uh, Swiss cheese one, same time, save some time there. So first thing we got to do, make a fan. We're not going to go crazy blade numbers or low blade number we're gonna do um, we'll do nine we'll stick right at the middle we'll make it a, a pretty standard looking deal here thin blades because they print the quickest uh we'll try to make it so no supports needed because then we can print quicker you know we're just going for quicker prints so let's hop over here so when i get ready to start one of these new fan ideas or just messing around in general on here i always like to start with something i know works so this is kind of just a fan i was i was messing with uh, so I'll take pretty much everything away except for the hub and that's kind of where I want to I want to keep so I think that's this and then a little farther So that's what I want because I know that this fits on the the fan assembly that we're gonna be using which is the a12 x25 So if I keep just this and start from there, I know that regardless what I make it'll fit So there we go. We got a hub. So now we just need to draw blades and it's pretty simple to draw blades if you haven't ever done it before uh, but essentially we're gonna start with a plane there and then we'll do I always set two planes. I always set two planes for the sketches for my blades. So I'll do a reference plane from there. Uh, we'll go out 15 or so. We want to just keep it kind of towards the edge of the fan, so it doesn't get too much goof, too much goofy twist in there that we're not looking for. So that plane's right there. And then since we're going for a 120 millimeter fan, we'll do a plane from there that's oh 59 millimeters out. Because the, the fan's 120 millimeters, but we're going for like 110 or 111 blade. So 59 will get us out there because we're going to have to cut the tips off anyway to give it a circular profile. So there's our two planes for our fan blades. So and then we'll just start by drawing them. And the easiest way to draw a fan blade, if you especially don't want it to have any support, is to make sure that you're making it thin and it starts and ends at the top. Or at least since we'll print it upside down, so we don't have any supports on the inside. This, this side here, we don't have any supports in here will make sure that the fan can print like this with no supports. Now, to keep everything simple, we're not gonna be going for crazy airfoil type shapes. Like, we don't really care about the math and the physics behind an airfoil right now. We're just gonna make something that we know will move air. And then I always like to make the, the width something similar to the, the lens, or not the lens, something similar to the nozzle size I'll be using. So, although, this is not exactly the thickness of the blade. If we use a 0.4 nozzle and we make the fan blades 0.8, it should be close. 
Now to set the angles of the fan blades, I always like to just use some construction lines. It just makes it simple. There we go, make that, make that one vertical. And then I always center this fan blade, the, the inner, inner one, I normally center it on the O-line. So we want this one to be steeper. Normally fan blades are steeper, closer they are to the hub. Uh, 45 is normally the cutoff for overhangs. You can probably do a little bit more, so this side won't be too bad. So we'll say, what's 55 look like? 55 degrees, boom, looking good. And then we also gotta set the radius of these two arcs also it does it also helps make them equal so they just stay the same but let's say 45 what does that look like it's a little shallow 35 good enough so that will be our inside blade or the inside profile of our blade for the next one we just come to the outside plane we made essentially we're going to do the same deal as before so we'll start with an arc and then you can, if you don't want to just make two arcs, you can always just go offset that one, 0.6 or 0.8, whatever it was, I think it was 0.8. But if you do it that way, you will have to do some trimming, make sure everything is the same and also extending. So I need to extend this line down to that one and then you gotta also trim it off. Boom, same deal, use the triangle like we did before. So up at an angle. And this one we can have more leeway with. So this one we normally want out to give it a forward swept. You know, if we want the blades to have a forward sweep, we need to move it this direction. That line is supposed to be on here. Get back. So like I said, we want to move this blade forward to give our blades like a forward sweep 20 millimeters out. And then the same deal for blade angle. So we'll do this angle or this to this. We know that one's you know, 45s are cut off. What does 45 look like? It's pretty shallow. I mean, it could be could be worse. We can maybe try to push it with 43. We can see see how it works. And then you kind of get that same profile you normally would see on a fan. But you can see we're still blue, so something's not constrained. What is it? What is it not like here? Now that's pretty much all you really need to do. So that if we exit that and then we do a a lofted base between those two, you'll get a fan. So essentially. You go there, you click this one, you click this one. You make sure these green dots are in the same area. When you boom, you got a straight bladed fan. But if you want to curve, there's another step you got to do. So we'll start a sketch on top here. We'll do a three point arc. And you just want to start from the beginning of this one, go to the beginning of that one. And you just put an arc on it like that. And you could give it, you can leave this one unconstrained if you really want to, it doesn't really matter. You could give it a, a radius of say 45. There you go. Everything's black, so we are constrained, or fully defined, I guess you'd call it. And now when you do a lofted base and you select this one and this one, it does that initially, but then you can do a guide curve, which puts a little curve on the fan blade. And then you got something that looks pretty, pretty normal to a fan. Normally you'd see this coming more out, so we can adjust that as well. So if we go back to this plane, and instead of making this locked onto the center point, we can move it back and we can give it a dimension just to make sure everything's fully defined. It's always good practice. And there you go. You got something that looks somewhat like a fan blade. Now we got to deal with this in the middle because that's not what we want, but we can, that's easy. That's easy enough to deal with. Essentially all we got to do here, if you want to just make it easy, select that circle, convert it, exit sketch, and we'll cut it up to the surface right here. Oh, it's not fully closed. There we go, up to surface, click on that surface, boom, good. And then you see we still got a little piece there so we can do the same thing. Back to that guy, you can also just draw a circle if you want to. I get to sure it's concentric, boom, there you go. Nice clean hub again and uh, something that looks like a blade. Now, we gotta make two of these guys. So this point, this part's pretty easy. So we want just one to be a normal fan blade. So we're gonna go up here and go to circular pattern. And for our direction, we're gonna just click this hub here. And you can do features, which works, but you know, if you're doing something similar, simple like this, it's just easier. If you just do the whole body, then it doesn't have to calculate the features. You don't have to worry about missing anything. You just got everything you want there. Turn it to nine, hit the check mark, and there you go. You got something that looks like a fan. Now we need to make it the right size. So you can either make it the right size now, or we can also, yeah, there's another step we need to do, which is in features, we need to combine all these. Because essentially we've just made a pattern of a bunch of the same bodies. So everything is not one entity, but now it is after you use the combine feature. So see, click on it, everything's good. 
but it's not the right size. So we know that we want our fan to be 111 millimeters. So we'll start to catch sketch on the surface. We'll come out like that. And we're gonna do 111. And there you can see that'll form our fan to the correct dimension. So hit escape or exit sketch. And now we're just gonna do cut extrude or not, not extrude, just cut. We're gonna cut this and we're gonna go through all both. You don't really need both, but through all. And then we're gonna flip the side to cut so now it does the outside. And when you hit check mark, there you go. You clipped your fan blades to make them more, more uniform with uh, what an actual fan looks like. So that's pretty much it for this one. This is all we need for that, that fan blade. We can print this upside down. Shouldn't need any support. Easy peasy. Now I'll save it as a copy. That's because I want to go back and edit this again. So now essentially if we drag this bar all the way up, we're just going to go back to where we made a blade. There we go. And now we're just going to cut some holes in it. So the easiest way to do this would be you can go to this plane right here and you can make a sketch. Now we're just going to draw some holes. Now there's a pattern function you could use, but you don't have to. You could just highlight them all right now and make sure they're all equal and have them positioned wherever you want. That is what our blade will look like. Now when we drag this line down, it's automatically going to put those holes in every one of these blades. <laughs> I feel like we need another hole right here. Eh, look at that, the old, the old swish, swish cheese fan. And that's all there is to it. Now you gotta slice it up and we'll print it out. So we'll be right back. Here's our fans. <laughs> you just look at the one with circles in it or holes in it, and you're like, there's something, something wrong here. But here they are. I printed uh, each of them on a different printer. So the one with holes in it was printed on the TiVo. The one that's just a normal fan was printed on this uh, Delta, the, the Q5. Uh, I've never printed a fan on I didn't know how it worked, but it worked really well. Uh, the Delta does circles very good, but both of these turned out pretty good. The one with holes in it, a bit stringy, but meh. Should be fine for what we need. Now, I'm curious in our testing. The first thing I want to test is the weight. So I want to measure each one of these uh, blades and see if the one with holes in it has a lighter weight. Because you would think holes, less material, lighter weight, faster spin. It's just simple math. But I don't know. Let's weigh them and see what it, see what it looks like. Okay, we got the scale set in grams. We're just going to do just the blades to see what they weigh. 10 grams. Right on the nose. Who would have thought? Okay, let's check the other. Okay, holy ho. 10 grams. You would think that that would have less mass. That is very interesting. Who would have thought? Well, uh, didn't expect that. I, lit I really thought that this one would be lighter and I don't have an explanation for why it's not. <laughs> if you have an idea, make sure to let me know. I'll check out the comments, but didn't see that coming, but they're still pretty light. So I guess we'll test how fast they spin. So these are PWM A12X25 motors. The uh, A12X25 spins 2000 RPMs or around there. Let's see if they spin uh, spin faster than a regular fan blade. They, they do have a bit more aggressive pitch, so there might be some more wind resistance, but they are lighter. So let's see how they all kind of line up. Just to get a baseline, we got a stock A12X25. Let's see how quick it's going. 21, 14, 12. It's pretty quick, actually. Normally, they're right around 2,000. A little less sometimes, but this one's getting it. We'll just say 2,100. Let's start with no holes. How about that? Really? That seems pretty slow. 1,600? Now for the one with the holes. We'll see if it's any quicker. Not really, it's right around 1600-ish. This one's almost 1700, I guess, but still slower than a stock, stock fan blade. Well, that's, that's not really as shocking as the weight thing. Uh, they are lighter blades, like I said, but they do have a more aggressive uh, pitch to them. Uh, larger surface area a little bit too. So, you know, more air resistance, slower speed. I didn't think it'd be that slow, but we're learning things today. Things that 
don't always have to make sense. But most importantly, let's see how they cool. We, we already know that this one's probably gonna do the best, let's be honest, but what about these two? Better, worse, margin of error? I don't know, we'll try them out. We'll run each one, 45 minutes, I to 64 on this half of this radiator, uh, including the standard A12X25, and then we'll come back and see if that blows our mind, just like the whole weight thing does, or speed. Everything's being a little weird today. Well, after some time and all the fans now run through the 45 minutes, what do you think? Yeah, this one, the stock A12X25 was the best, quite obviously, but then these two, well, the fan without holes did do better. The one with the holes <laughs> did the worst, to be expected, uh, but it didn't do that much worse, and you could maybe argue margin of error, but in the end, the, uh, uh, the obvious played out, except for the weight thing, I'm still caught up on that. The one with holes in it did the worst, the one without holes did better, and a hey, Noctua is still, still number one. Uh, I guess we haven't tested noise. Let's listen to these two things, see if the holes reduce sound noise. I'm, I'm, I'm grasping at strings here. Let's try to find a reason to put holes in something because uh, it's not looking good so far. So I got everybody's favorite measuring device, the, uh, the DB app. I know decibel meters aren't expensive, but I don't have one and I, I, I might buy one, but I don't know. Let's just go. Let's, let's just be quiet for a minute and measure the room. I'm thinking about 37. What about you guys? So now let's measure the holy fan. I'll go with 40. 40 seems, seems fair. Contact. 44. So, so plus or minus my uh, accuracy of my calibrated arm, but we won something. The holy fan is quieter than the standard fan. But other than that, it sucks at everything else. But it was fun to design it, test it, try it out, and show you guys. So if you got any more interesting ideas, doesn't matter how dumb, trust me. Leave me a comment down below. Get subscribed if this is the kind of stuff you like. I got 3D printing stuff, computer stuff, all kinds of stuff. But until next time, dudes. Peace.